Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated for just a couple of minutes. I want to just share my burden for this weekend and the theme and the direction. We understand, I think, that God is limitless. If you've been around, around church for any length of time, I think that that's just kind of a, you know, a common understanding. There's some, you know, Christian buzzwords that we throw around from time to time. You know, just saying that God is powerful is not enough. And so we have a Bible word for that. We say omnipotent, right? Which means all powerful. You know, just saying that God is present, that's not enough. And so we have this Bible word, it's omnipresent, which means everywhere present. Because just, you know, human vernacular, it doesn't quite do justice to the nature of the God that we serve. And of course, we know that God is knowing, but that's not enough. You can't just say that. You've got to say he's omniscient. If you've never been in church before, you have no idea what that means. But that means all-knowing. God is limitless. Really, in every facet of his nature, there are no limits with the God that we serve. In his power, in his love, in his mercy. I mean, you can go down the list. God is limitless. The scriptures teach us this throughout the word of God. Isaiah 43 and 13, just to give you a few. The prophet wrote and said, from eternity to eternity, I am God. Not only can our human history not contain God, but all of eternity. You can go as far back into eternity past, and if you were able to, you could go as far forward into eternity to come, and you would not be able to contain God. All of time itself can't contain Him. Second Chronicles 2 and 6, it tells us that not even the highest heavens can contain the God we serve. Even our vast universe, which to our best guess is infinite, our universe cannot contain God. But not only is God not limited in his nature, but he is not limited in his power. And Jesus reminds us in the New Testament, in Matthew 28, 18, that he has all power in heaven and in earth. And so the reality tonight is that nothing is too hard for God. Can you look at your neighbor and can you remind them of that truth that nothing is too hard for God? Can you look at your other neighbor and tell them the same thing? Because I don't think the other neighbor quite got it. Now, I know we quote verses like this a lot and we shout about it. And I really do think that we believe these things. But in spite of all this, I also recognize that we have the ability to keep God's power at bay. I don't know if you understand this, but we have the ability to limit a limitless God. And there's one particular passage of scripture that I think really lends itself to this concept. And it's found in Matthew chapter 13, and it begins in verse 54. Jesus, he comes into his own country. And the Bible tells us that he taught the people there in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished. I mean, his wisdom and his teaching, it blew their mind. And they said, whence hath this man this wisdom? Where did he get so smart? And how can he do these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Isn't this just Jesus? Is it his mother not called Mary and his brethren? Isn't that James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? They're our neighbors. I mean, these are just normal, everyday, average dudes. And his sisters, are they not all with us also? Whence hath this man all these things? The scripture tells us that they were offended in Jesus. And Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. And if you don't get any other verse out of the passage, take note of verse 58. Because verse 58 says, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. This passage, and there's probably others that we could look at, but this passage lets me know that human beings have the ability to limit a limitless God. Jesus had all power, all power in heaven and in earth. He, he had the ability to perform whatever miracle they might need right then and there. But he was hindered because of their unbelief. It would seem to me that Jesus was not able to perform the miraculous there because this was a group of people that were familiar with Jesus. 
They thought they already knew what he was capable of and the extent of his ability. They had a history with Jesus and, and they allowed all of these things and all of those previous encounters with him to determine the ceiling of what he could do in their midst. And they missed out. They didn't have the miraculous. They didn't have the all power in heaven and earth thing, you know, happen there in Nazareth. And I just ask, how often do we do the same thing? And I'm not coming to, to be a downer here. This is going to be encouraging in a moment. But how often do we do the same thing? We allow previous encounters with Jesus to become the box that we put him in that limits him from doing what he really wants to do when we gather. I've just come to remind us that Jesus really can do anything. That nothing is too hard for our God. That he really does have all power and whatever you have need of. Not only does he know it and not only does he hear you when, he, when you call, but he can do something about your need. That's the God that we serve. You know, maybe you've had some pretty awesome moments in the presence of God. Maybe you've experienced some pretty incredible moves of his spirit, but God is not confined even to those landmark moments in your life. God can exceed himself whenever he very well pleases to. Ephesians 1.19, the Apostle Paul said, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? In other words, God can outdo himself whenever he wants to. And I just don't want to get in the way of that and whatever he wants to do. I don't want to hold God's spirit hostage because I have low expectation or absent faith. Look at your neighbor one more time and shout, God is limitless. All too often, I think we impose limitations on the God that we serve, whether it be by small prayers, absent faith, a lack of passionate pursuit, or whatever else. If we aren't careful, we can miss the abundant bounty of God's presence and power in our lives. As I was thinking about this weekend, and in particular thinking about the words I would speak at the beginning of this weekend, my mind went to the idea of, of a blank check. Now, I don't know if this is okay or not, but I took this out of the secretary treasurer's office. He just happens to be my granddad, so he'll have to forgive me. Family, right? But this is a blank check. Now, I could take this and, and write an amount in and write a memo, and it's already got one of the two necessary signatures, so I only have to forge one. <laughs> just, just kidding, I don't, I don't do that kind of thing. But I have the potential and the ability to, you know, to get some money from this blank check, perhaps. And I think we understand the concept of it. The person who receives a blank check is, is the one that determines what is received. The one in possession of the resources leaves it up to the recipient what is given. They don't determine it, but we determine it. I determine it. I've got the blank check. And on the first night of Youth Explosion, I believe that, that God is giving us a blank check, as it were. And he's asking, what do you want to see me do? Because I've got the resources. I've got the power. I'm limitless. But really, it's up to you. Just like it was up to those in Nazareth, and, and they missed out because they didn't you know, write the check out, so to speak, and, and ask for something big. They had low faith, and they missed it. It's, it's up to us. It's up to you and me. And my mind went to the story in the Gospels in particular. I'll, I'll reference Mark chapter 6, but there's the story of the young girl named Salome, and she dances before King Herod on the occasion of his birthday. And man, this must have been some kind of dance because Herod was so impressed. And he promised to give her up to half of his kingdom, whatever she wanted. You talk about a blank check. Whatever you want, Salome, up to half of my kingdom, you can have it. I'll call my servants. They'll deliver it to your house, no problem. But what's striking to me and funny and sad all at the same time is the fact that she didn't ask for very much. Do you remember what she asked for? She asked for the head of John the Baptist. Now, when, you, when you're talking up to half of King Herod's kingdom or the head of some dead guy, 
That seems pretty small and minuscule to me. I understand that there are reasons for this. I understand she was feeling the pressure from her mother, but, but she asked for something so small when so much was available. We aren't standing before an earthly king tonight. But we're standing in the presence of the king of kings. And we've not been offered up to half of a kingdom, but the Bible says that it's our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom completely. We have the ability to pray, Thy kingdom come and Thy will be done. There is much available to us here tonight. Every day that we live and every time we come into His presence, it's as if God gives us a blank check. The resources are there. His power is there. Healing is there. Whatever we have need of, it's in His possession. And God is willing and waiting to bless abundantly. But it is up to us what we receive. We determine the ceiling of God's power in our midst. And so it is time at the beginning of this weekend, and it's time just in general that we break down every barrier and we take the limits off of our God. I have come with expectancy for God to do great things and go beyond anything that I have ever seen. And I wonder if you want to join me in that expectation. Could you just stand with me for a moment? And we're going to sing again and we're going to give away some prizes and we're going to hear the word preached tonight. But we're going to pray that every hindrance and every limitation and every barrier, that it would fall in the presence of God. And that whatever God would want to do, that our small expectation, that it would not hold him back. That our limited faith, we're, we're coming against that in Jesus' name. We want to see God do whatever he wants to do. Can you join together with somebody near you if you're comfortable with that? Take them by the hand or grab them by the shoulder. Huddle together with them. And let's just lift our voices together. And can we just pray in the name of Jesus that his kingdom would come in our midst this weekend and that his will would be done? Can we come against every barrier and boundary that we sometimes draw in the sand and keep God from working? Can we come against that in Jesus' name right now? Lord God, thank you for allowing us the privilege to come into your presence. And God, we know that there is nothing that is too hard for you. There is nothing that is out of your reach of ability. And so God, we pray that our human thinking and our human nature would not get in the way of what you want to do here in this place this weekend. God, I pray that whatever you want to do in the heart of some young person, God, whatever calling you want to lay on some life or some couple or some family, God, I'm praying that it would go forth unhindered and, and unfettered in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that your limitless ability and power would not be limited by us. Not here, not now, not this weekend. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit flow. Let your power flow. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. Just for another few moments, lift your voice, lift your hands. Call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up a shout of praise unto God. Let your voice out. Lift up a shout of praise unto God. <laughs>